There we go. I will, uh, I will begin with a word of prayer. I think I got everybody's quizzes, so it's good. Dear Holy Father, we uh, thank you for this day. I thank you for the students. Just ask you to bless our work today, Lord. In your name I pray. Amen. So um, today I'm supposed to talk about... Where was it? Um, chapter 9. So chapter 9 is um, static equilibrium, elasticity, and fracture. I'm not really covering that stuff. So the best way for me to explain what I want you to learn from chapter 9 is to actually work the three recommended homework problems in the back, which I will do now. So... And in some sense, these actually would have been reasonable questions to ask before. But I didn't ask them, partly because we didn't do problems quite like this. So problem number one from page 252 is a good example. Let's work through it. So here we have three forces applied to a tree. Tree. Use your imagination. We're looking at the tree from the top down. And so the trunk is in here somewhere. All right? And we're told that there are three forces applied to this tree sapling as shown in the figure. And so the one force is like this, F sub A. And then we have a force up here, F sub B. And finally, a third force F sub C, we're given more information. Um, in fact, we're given that FA has um, a magnitude of 385 newtons. And we're also given that the magnitude of FB, which is just FB without a vector, is 475 newtons. <laughs> Your book carelessly writes F-A vectors, 385 newtons. Pathetic. This is saying a vector is equal to a number. This book fails my course. Not you guys, though. I'm talking about the other 231. I wouldn't fail you guys for saying a number is a vector. Yeah. I'd try to look the other way. <laughs> All right. I'd try to look the other way. Um, but it would, it would still bother me if you said a number was equal to a vector. Because a vector has a magnitude and direction, right? And that's different than a number, usually. Anyway, so <clears throat> we're also given, I gotta find a place to sit my book. Um, we're also given that, oh, come on, put my, ah. calculator. We're given an angle. We're given one of the angles involved here is 105 degrees. So this angle here is 105 degrees. But on the other hand, this angle down here is not known. So your goal is to find, so the question is, What is the magnitude and direction of the third mystery force, FC? So to specify the magnitude and direction of F sub C, if we can erase that question mark and say, let's call that theta, right, theta. So the direction would be essentially described by theta. Theta would describe the direction, right? If you told me what theta was, then that would explain what direction that vector points. Agree? Now here's the physical idea. These three forces are pulling on the tree sapling in such a way that it's not moving, all right? So there's, there's an equilibrium um, between these forces, I believe, unless I've 
misread the problem. Three forces are applied to the tree sapling, as shown in the figure, to stabilize it. All right, so these, these are stabilizing forces. They might be like, um, you know, uh, you guys ever seen like a, a tree that's just been planted? If it's kind of big, they'll put like three cables on it one way, one different way to keep it steady. Like that is the idea. Okay, um, although these are, well, I'll shut up. Don't, 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 we're not really thinking three-dimensionally. That's, I think, the shortcoming in the analogy, right? To really think about the, the tie cables to a sapling, I'd need to think three-dimensionally because we don't usually plant two-dimensional trees, right? I mean, I'm just saying. Okay, anyway, so the, the, the big idea here is that the, the net force is zero, right? But that's really a vector equation. So in other words, the net x force on the tree and the net y force on the tree has to be zero. So what I would do when I face a problem like this is I would break down each force into components. Okay, so in other words, we have the equation Fa plus Fb plus Fc equals to zero. But what that really means is Fax plus Fa F Fb Fbx plus Fcx equals to zero. And also Fay plus F by plus f cy is equal to zero. We have these two, so this is a vector equation. This, these are two what are called scalar equations, all right? Just ordinary garden variety equations. So we, we need to figure out what these different components are in order to figure out the missing part of the story, right? Which is, see, fc would be what? Fc is equal to Fcx comma Fcy, right? We're, we're trying to find that. Certainly if we can find this, if we can find that, it's easy to calculate the magnitude and the direction using usual trigonometric ideas. All right, so let's take it one at a time. Let's start with Fa. What can you tell me about? I'm going to make a table to organize our work, okay? Um, I'll make it here. So let's say here's Fa, let's talk about the x component, let's talk about the y component, all right? Then we'll do B, and then we'll do, we'll do C. Well, actually, we won't even do that. We'll just do A and B, how about that? Um, I'll find C. So what's the x component of A? What's the y component of A? This force F, what's the vertical component of it? Yeah, zero. What's the horizontal component? 385 newtons, we're told that. So... That was easy, right? How about, how about B? See, B, I need to think about some more. Let me just take away from my, 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 my given picture. There's a lot going on. It's kind of busy. Let's draw FB again off to the side here and think about it. So we've got FB, right? Which is what, 475 newtons. And what if I draw this little right triangle? What would the angle be? See, because this would be FBY, and this would be FBX, right? So what's that? What's the angle? See, I'll foolishly draw it up here as well, badly, but... Yeah, 15 degrees, right? So 105 degrees sweeps to the vertical leg in the triangle, and then 15 more degrees to get to 105. So that's 15, 15 degrees in here. So then right triangle trigonometry says, hey, FBY 
is equal to 475 newtons times the cosine of 15 degrees. And FBX is equal to 475 newtons times the sine of 15 degrees. Why is that wrong? Which direction in the x does this vector point? In the positive or negative x direction? Negative, right? So what am I missing in my current formula? A negative. How do I know that that minus goes there? I use thinking. I thought about it. You should also think about these things. If you write down components for a vector which is pointing in quadrant 2, it should have a negative x component, right? Do you know what I'm talking about, quadrants? Refresh your memory. Here's quadrant 1, quadrant 2, quadrant 3, quadrant 4. Not that I really ever use that terminology much on a test or quiz in here, but it's useful for the current discussion. In quadrants 1 and 4, if we have a vector that points to quadrants 1 or 4, we should have positive x components, right? If we have a vector which points to quadrants 2 or 3, we could have negative x components, right? Where should we have positive y components? In quadrants 1 and 2, we have negative y components in quadrants 3 and 4. So this should always be a guide. You should think through, as you break down the vector into components, do the signs of my answer make sense? It's not hard to check, but it's easy to miss. <sighs> All right, so it's one of the primary mistakes students make. Yes? Oh, yeah, sure. 15 degrees. So I'll, I'll blow it up here. So we've got this is 105 degrees. So if I do like that, then to get over to here, is 90 degrees, so to go 15, I got to go 15 more. Yeah. Perfectly reasonable question. Now, what is those work? What do those work out to? Let's, let's crunch the numbers here. 475 times the cosine of 15. Hopefully, I'm in degree mode. I get myself a 458.81, 458.81 newtons, and. One hundred and twenty two point nine four again minus one hundred and twenty two point nine four newtons there okay now I can put those in my table right because the table keeps me organized so I got uh, minus one hundred and twenty two point nine four newtons and I got what Four hundred fifty-eight point eight one newtons here. Now FC, I don't know, right? I don't know what FC is, but the thing is, I can just put it symbolically here, right? FCX, FCY, <laughs> right? If we um. If we look at the sum of these, right, what should we get in the x and y components? Zero, right? Because these forces balance out. And so I can look at column one and I can look at column two in this table and it, it shows me what I should do, right? So I, what, I, what this table tells me is that FCX um, it should be equal to 122.94 newtons minus 385 uh, newtons. So the x component for my force is apparently minus 262.1. And the y component for the C force is, uh, 
Oh, obviously minus 458.81, right? I don't need a calculator for that. You see it. So let's 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 put everything together. What have we learned? We've learned that the um, balancing force here is what? Fc is equal to minus 262.2, oh, 262.1 newtons, comma, minus 458.8, I'll just leave it at 8 newtons, right? So what's the magnitude? Fc is what? Square root of 262.1 newtons squared plus, um, you know, 458.8 newtons. I mean, you could put a minus in there and square it if you want. But anyway, we should agree on the answer. What is it? I get uh, 528.4. There you go. That's the magnitude of the mystery force C. And what's that, what's that angle theta? Let me ask an easier question. What is, if we look at this, um, FC looks like, like this, right? So if I look at this triangle here and this angle, so I've got uh, 262.1, I've got 458.8 vertically. Um, if I have that, tr that triangle, what would, the, um, what would this angle, let me call this angle beta. What would that angle beta be? See there I could use that the tangent of beta is equal to 458.8 divided by 262.1, which would tell me that beta is the inverse tangent of, you know, 458.8 divided by 262.1, whatever that is. I got a 60.26 degrees there. Now that's not the angle we're interested in, is it? So what's theta then? Yeah, if I, if I, if I draw this beta up in my original picture, what, is, what angle is it? You guys see it? It's, yeah, what, what kind of angle is beta relative to theta? What does it mean if angles sum to 180, what do we call those kind of angles? You're like, I passed my high school geometry and I'm now putting that behind me. You cannot bring me back to that place. What's that? Obtuse. Theta, theta, it is true. Um, beta is cute. I mean, acute. And, 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 and theta, theta, theta is obtuse. Um, they sum to 180 degrees. These are what kind of angles? Not, uh, complementary means uh, sum to 90. I heard supplementary. We have, yeah, supplementary. Does this matter? No. It does not. The larger point is you should, under, the, the larger point is you should understand that they sum to 180, so what's theta equal to? So theta. So I got 119.74 degrees for theta. What's the standard angle of 
What's the standard angle of, um, of FC though? It's not 119 degrees, right? That is not the standard angle. What's the standard angle for, for C, by the way? Let me picture it. So FC points like this, right? The standard angle is like that. So you could either say that the standard angle for FC is minus 119.74 degrees. That would be, that would be legit because it's, it's, count, it's, clockwise, it's clockwise 119 degrees, right? Or you would add 360 to minus 190 or 240.26 degrees. A lot of times to remove ambiguity in a test question, I'll say find the standard angle of a vector, right? That's unambiguous. It says the angle swept from the positive x-axis to where the vector points. I said it's unambiguous, but that's not really, that kind of flies in the face of the fact that I just wrote two different standard angles for the same vector, yeah? Because I just told you that minus 119 degrees and also 240.2 degrees are the same Standard angle. It's troubling, isn't it? But this is the deal. We always have this ambiguity with angle measure. We can add 360 or subtract 360 as suits us. <clears throat> All right, so that's problem one. Problem number, this is problem number one in this chapter. <laughs> it seems it's kind of kind of tough, isn't it? Although I, I, but honestly guys, haven't you already done this in that lab? This is the analysis required for the, uh, the lab with the wheel and the, you know, masses hanging off of it. Remember? You You're like, my, my lab partner did the analysis for it, so I don't know. Like, we wouldn't know, right? Yeah. Because, okay, so standard angles. So here, here guys, if we have vectors pointing in quadrant one, you're looking for standard angles between zero and 90. If you have a vector pointing into quadrant two, you're looking for standard angles between 90 and 180. In quadrant three, standard angles range from 180 to 270. In quadrant four, standard angles range from 270 to 360. Or if you want to work with negative angles, you can go from zero to minus 90 and minus 90 to minus 180. That's the yeah. 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 St standard angle measures from the, from the positive x-axis in the counterclockwise fashion. So this is positive x-axis and counterclockwise. A clock is this thing we used to hang on walls, especially in classrooms. So we'd know like what time it was. Maybe it's behind the pillar. Nope, 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 nope. It's 244, okay, that, that works for me. Um, next up, let's work a, now wouldn't this be more interesting if it was three dimensional? No. I think this would be way more interesting if it was three dimensional. I could. You know, I give you the point on the tree which it's attached to, you know, and then you, uh... and what about the force, what about the force of the roots of the tree on the tree, you know? Shouldn't that come into play? No? no? Uh, you guys are no fun. Hey guys, the larger point here is this is a skill that if you don't already have, you need to develop, which is the, the idea of breaking vectors into components to add them. This has actually come up before. It will come up again. This is something that will be tested on the final. All right, so if you don't understand something that's going on here, you need to take the time to figure it out. All right, just saying. <clears throat>
So the next problem concerns a hanging chandelier that's been hung in a somewhat weird way. Um, and I will actually work the problem, rather than working the problem in the, I'm going to leave the problem in the textbook for you to work out. I'm actually going to work the corresponding problem in the section, in the, um, in the text, which is back on page 232. I will foolishly attempt a picture. I'm, I'm going to try to, so I'm modifying it a bit. So here's the picture. We've got like a, a knot or something. We've got a horizontal cable and then a vertical, well not vertical, but this cable here. This one's at 60 degrees. And then hanging off of that, we have a, uh, a chandelier, which I will foolishly attempt a picture of. Ooh, I, 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 it shows poorly. Let's try again. I don't know why I'm wasting your class time on this, but it just seems fun. Eh? All right, there you go. <laughs> um, so I don't know why anybody would have one of these in their house. Have you thought about cleaning a chandelier? It's not, it, Tyler knows. <laughs> That's the voice of experience. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, so, so the, 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 right, great. Now, we're told, that, well, here's the, here's the example. Calculate the tensions, FA and FB, in the two cords that are connected to the vertical support, um, to vertically support the 200 kilogram. So, the difference between this and the problem, the problem in the textbook, and I'm going to try to convert this to the problem in the textbook, so if this, if this is a mass M, right, and um, so I need to picture something here. So FB is pictured to go this way, and FA is pictured to go that way, all right. And we're also told in the, uh, in, this is like number seven in the section. I'm, so I'm doing a modification of problem seven from the text, okay? This is like number seven from, oh man, what page was it? 250? You said 252? Oh, okay, thank you. But this, this is, Somewhat like example 9-2 on page 232, although I'm modifying it, okay? And the way I'm modifying it is so that it's more like the homework problem. The homework problem doesn't tell us the mass of the chandelier. It asks, what's the maximum mass that you could give the chandelier if it's, if it's hung in this situation like this and you're using cables which snap past a certain tension, all right? So just for the sake of conversation, let's suppose that our cables are good to a thousand newtons, all right? So suppose, let's assume cable good up to 1,000 newtons. Past that, they might snap, all right? So then the question is, what's the maximum mass that we can hang given this situation? So how do we solve this problem? So there's, we're in an equilibrium, right? So there's the tension force here. What's the tension force equal to? Let me start writing the solution in red. What's the tension force equal to? This is an equilibrium. So that force pulling down is coming from what? The weight of the chandelier, right? Which is just mg. So, again, this belongs in this chapter. What number chapter is I can forget what chapter. Chapter 9. B 
because this is an equilibrium, right? Equilibrium. All the forces balance, right? Now you could you could try to apply the um, you know Newton's law to the chandelier itself, but that wouldn't be any help, right? Because th that doesn't have anything to anything to do directly with the FA or FB. To answer this question, we need to look at the sum of the forces at the you know at the point where the um, the cables are anchored together, right? So. <clears throat> Right there. So what we, we, we know, and, and I can be more specific, the tension force is what? It's actually 0 minus mg, right? Because it's a vector. And what we know is that Fa plus Fb plus the tension force is equal to 0. Because that's the mass times the acceleration, right? I mean, you might ask what mass I'm talking about. I'm talking about the, the mass of the bit of rope that's, or not, or whatever it is that's holding these three things together. It doesn't really matter what it is. The point is that the sum of the forces at that point is zero. So we can, it doesn't even concern us. But now, we can use the breaking into components technique again, right? Notice that Fa equals to what? Fax, Fay, can we figure out what those are? Let me draw another picture over here. We've got 60 degrees for this angle. This would be Fax. This would be Fay. This is the magnitude Fa, right? which we don't know, but we can think about it symbolically, right? So FAX is minus FA, looks like cosine of 60. FAY is FA sine of 60. All right, and now we can make a, a table. So here it is. So I've got my, my FA, my FB, my tension. It's the X, here's the Y. Let's see here, so A, we have again, what is it, minus, oh, what's the cosine of 60? It's a half. So that's Fa over 2. Sine of 60, that's Fa times the square root of 3 divided by 2. It doesn't really matter if you don't know that. You can still use your calculator to calculate cosine of 60 and sine of 60, right? And how about FB? I think FB is a little bit easier, right? What's the vertical component to FB? Zero, right? And what's the X component? It's just FB. And does, does plus make sense? Should it be minus? Should it be plus? What do you think? I think it should be plus, right? Remember, FB without a vector symbol is the magnitude. This is our notational scheme, guys. If I write a vector, I can write that as a, a hat. So what that is, is a hat is a unit vector that points in the direction of a. So a hat is always defined to be 1 over the magnitude of a times the a vector. Just a reminder, we always have this way of breaking any vector into a direction vector, which is a unit vector, times its magnitude, which is a positive or possibly zero number. Although I guess technically the zero vector doesn't have a direction, but. And how about the, how about, how about T? What we got there? Zero, 
minus mg. So the sum of these, right, Fa plus Fb plus the tension force again is what? Zero. So this gives me two equations that must be true for Fa and Fb, right? We have the Fb minus Fa over 2 is equal to zero from the x. And from the y, I have that Fa times the square root of 3 divided by 2 minus mg is equal to 0. So this tells me what? This tells me that Fa is equal to what? Fa is equal to 2mg divided by the square root of 3. And how about Fb? Apparently it's half of Fa, right? So which one of these cables do we have to worry about breaking first? Because FA and FB are the tensions in the upper cables in the sideways looking cable, right? So yeah, it looks like B, B is the trouble because it's, it's, it's twice, twice what FA is, right? Wait a minute. No, the way around. FA we have to worry about. <laughs> I'm very gullible. I can be sucked into that. So if, if let's see here, if FA is 1,000, what's FB? 500, right? So at the moment FA breaks, FB is, uh, the, the B cable is still fine. So we've got to worry about this. This needs to be less than or equal to 1,000 newtons, right? Wait a minute. Yes. Eventually I'll. And so worst case scenario, look at the equality case, right? What, what, what do we get for equality here? M equals to 1,000 newtons times the square root of 3 divided by 2 times 9.8 meters per second squared. What's that give us? What's our maximum mass that we can hang get, given these cables? Eighty-eight point three seven kilograms. Now, I think as a general rule of thumb, if that's actually where your cables break, you wouldn't want to get anywhere close to that, would you? <laughs> right? At some point, some kid's going to like jump out onto it and hang onto it for a second or something. I don't know. Any any number of things that can happen with a chandelier. <clears throat> Maybe you live in a country with monkeys. I don't know. There's some places if you leave the windows open, monkeys come in your house and mess with your stuff, right? I'm talking about it happens. I'm just making this up. I've seen pictures. They're real punks, from what I've heard. Any questions about this? All right. The next problem that I thought would be useful for us to go through was, if I can find it, can you tell me what the other recommended homework was? I, I just, I looked at it earlier. It was one, seven, and 17. 17. Ah, the uh, teeter-totter problem. So again, this is something you've worked out in the lab analysis, or perhaps your lab partner, right? And so here's the, uh, the basic problem. You got a teeter-totter, right? You got B with a mass of 35 kilograms. You've got over here um, A with a mass of 
45 kilograms, you're told that these kids A and B, which I will illustrate by these boxes with A and B in. Oh, here, I'll, I'll put a head on there. There you go. See? I can make them happy? Make one angry? Oh, okay. <laughs> no, nah, he's just, he's not really angry. He kind of looks more... They're just chilling. Yeah, he's just kind of like, yeah, whatever. How do I do angry? Oh, they need top hats? All right, yeah, I mean, I... I, I not... I got to be careful. If I'm, not, if I'm not careful, a top hat will be misinterpreted as a Pharrell hat. I, I don't mean that. Um... Really more a comment from about three years ago, maybe two. Okay, so um, this board, we're told that the board is 3.2 meters long and that it's balanced in the middle. So if the board is 3.2 meters long and it's balanced in the middle, what does that tell you about? How, how far is A and B from... So we could figure that out. My picture is not quite right yet. Let me try again. I don't know. I'm still probably wrong. And then we're told that a um, a girl C, man, these these kids have really boring names, whose mass is 25 kilograms, should be placed somewhere in here. Um, the question is, what what what's x to make her balance to make it? Make it balance. So, what's that? Where's oh, where's her head? Uh, yeah, fine. She's, she's, a, she's a, the, the, can the girls wear top hats? I don't know. A bow? All right, I'll, I'll try. But I think it's probably just going to make her into like a pig. <laughs> Let me finish it. Me, yeah. Oh, cat, a cat needs whiskers. I'm not sure what we're... This, this continues. I'll be drawing dragons here pretty soon. Let's, let's, let's stop this. My dragons are not good. It's, it's not worth your time. Really, none of my pictures are good, frankly. Um, anyway, so this, this they all, yeah, I, I guess I've got a future in, in uh, freehanding whiteboard chandeliers. Um, what's the salary on that? I don't know. But can't you can't you imagine like in somewhere somewhere in New York City, there's some sort of like really elite art gallery, and you go into this room. And there's just this guy standing there. Now, he wouldn't be wearing what I'm wearing. He'd be wearing something like more absurd, like a jumpsuit, right? And he's just standing, drawing things on a whiteboard and erasing them like over and over and over again. And that's the piece, right? It's a living art. Yeah. And you pay money to go see this. And then you talk to your friends about how profound it is and about how it's like a metaphor for modern society and the futility of existence or something, right? No? I feel like none of you are from New York City, so I can reasonably say this without offending you. Even if you're from New York City, you probably wouldn't care. Okay. Um, did I ever mention I hate New York City? Anyway, so. Oh, well, I didn't have to. No, actually, uh, New York City is okay. It's just the parking there. I hate it. I hate it with a, uh, hate it from my, the bottom of my soul. Oh, okay, okay. So, equilibrium. Now, this one, an equilibrium. There are two things that have to balance, actually, forces and torques. Now, torque has not been interesting for the previous problems. There just was really nothing to think about. This one, the forces balancing, if you think about the, you know, the, um, the, the, the log on which they're, or plank, whatever you want to say, that they're balancing, the, the sum of the forces on that is zero. 
right? What are the forces that are on the log? There are three, well, four really. The four, five, five forces. The force of gravity on the log itself, the, um, the force of, you know, the force of A, B, and C pushing down on the, on the, on the board, right? And then what? The, the, the force of the fulcrum pointing, you know, pressing back up on, on, the, uh, on the board, and these balance out, right? So the net force is zero, but that doesn't really give me much insight. What's more interesting is looking at the sum of the torques on the, on the board, right? And also we're assuming that, well actually we're not assuming. Why, why is it that we don't have to think about the torque that comes from the weight of the board itself? I mean, the board definitely isn't massless, right? This, this board weighs something. Why does the torque of the board on its, the, you know, the torque that's coming from the mass, yeah, it's balanced out, right? There's an equal amount of torque to the one side or the other because the board is balanced. So we can ignore that in the equilibrium. But the net torque should be zero. And we don't need vectors here because there's only one rotational axis, which is what? Right there, right? The pivot point, the fulcrum. And so the rotational axis is coming out of the board at you like that. Hmm, interesting. And um, so we have, what, the torque from A plus the torque from B plus the torque from C. And I got to think about whether those are positive torques or negative torques. Um, so let's say that the, um, this direction is the positive rotational direction, all right, counterclockwise. So given that that's counterclockwise, where, where are the, why do I say that there's a torque produced from A? What am I really saying? I'm, I'm saying that the force of gravity, right, the weight of A, MAG, is like that, right? And so that's producing a positive torque. So I have the distance A is from the pivot point times MAG. And then minus the distance that B is from the pivot point times MBG minus the distance, which we called X, from the pivot point times MCG. That's, that's the uh, balancing of torques here, right? Where I've used that the torque is R cross F in each case, all right? Does that make sense? All right. Now, we know some things. What is, what is RA and RB? One point six meters, right? And, um, oh, we could cancel the G out, right? G, G, G. And um, we get X is equal to RAMA minus RB MB divided by MC. by algebra, which is, uh, let's see here, 1.6 meters, my MA is 45 kilograms, and again, 1.6 meters times 35 kilograms, and my, 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 my girl and or cat mass was 25, that's a large cat. Um, 25 kilograms. Maybe it's like a like a bobcat or a yeah. baby tiger or something. I don't know. Let's see here. Um, yep. So you got to work that out. So we got 1.6 meters times 10 kilograms divided by 25 kilograms, 16, all right, fine, I'll use the calculator. <sighs> Grown weak. Zero point six four 
meters. That's where the girl should sit to balance. This the the the, the C, the cat. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, RC would be fine. Absolutely. I was using X because it was in the book. That's all. They have like a little X in the diagram that I have uh, failed to reproduce. So I think we got time for another couple problems. Let me keep at it. I liked problem 88, I think it was, from the previous, uh, previous chapter. Kind of an interesting problem. Here's how it goes, if I find it. Oh man, no, not 88. I mean, 88 is not bad, but that wasn't the one I talked about. 90. Here's what problem 90 says from page 228. Suppose a star the size of our sun, but with a mass eight times as great, were rotating at a speed of one revolution per nine days. Well, that's not too fast, is it? If it were to go undergo a gravitational collapse to a neutron star with a radius of 12 kilometers, and in that process it lost three quarters of its mass in the process, what would its rotation speed be? All right, and then it asks us to calculate the rotational speed given two different scenarios. The one scenario, the lost mass carries with it angular momentum. The other scenario, the lost mass does not carry angular momentum with it. So here's the idea. So we're starting out with a, 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 a star. Well, let me make the star a little bit less. Stars don't look like that. Stars actually are more boring. They're more like this. Um, it's, it's the size of our sun, but with a mass eight times as great. So the mass is eight times the mass of the sun. And it's rotating. Its initial angular velocity is equal to, what does it say? Eight, it, one revolution per nine days. Right. Okay, that's its initial um, angular velocity. It says it undergoes gravitational collapse to a neutron star. So then this collapse to a neutron star. This does not do it justice. <laughs> so like all that mass collapses down to itty bitty neutron star and does it tell us the radius the size of our sun oh you lazy homework problem you didn't tell me the radius of the sun you jerk Err. so it's a radius of the sun yeah google it for me if you don't mind if I don't get to it first <laughs> What you got? Yeah, kilometers would be good. What'd you say? The radius of the sun is what? 600. And what are those? Kilometers. Um,
12 kilometers. Yeah, my picture is very much not to scale, right? So it does, undergoes this gravitational collapse to a neutron star with a radius of 12 kilometers while losing three quarters of its mass. So mass of the star is, you know, what's, if you lost three quarters of eight, what you got? Twice the mass of the sun, right? So then the question is, what's its rotation speed going to be if you assume part A that no angular momentum is lost by the lost mass? So part A, assume lost mass carries no angular momentum. Okay, so how, how, what, what's the idea of this problem? Like, what's, what's the physical concept that we use to solve this problem? What governs the collapse of stars, in fact? One of the, one of the things that governs the collapse of stars is the conservation of angular momentum. So what, what is the angular momentum? Now, it's probably... Um, so we have one revolution per nine days is the initial angular speed, right? Um, What's the, um, what's the moment of inertia initially? If we assume that the mass is uniform, which is not quite true for the sun, but eh, for the purposes of this discussion, let's assume that the mass is uniformly distributed, yeah? So in that case, we have a uniform sphere. We have two-fifths mr squared. Two-fifths. times 8 times the mass of the sun times the radius of the sun squared. That's the original moment of inertia. What's the moment of inertia for the, for the end one? So this is the moment of inertia. Now this is not for the sun, right? It's for the, I don't know, we should give this thing a name. Bob? Okay. So... I'm Bob. So the, the Bob star has this initial moment of inertia, and that's its initial angular velocity. The moment of inertia for the neutron star afterwards, again, assuming it's uniform, would be two-fifths um, times the mass, which now is twice the mass of the sun, right, times the 12 kilometers um, squared. Now what's, mo what's moment of inertia? Oh, excuse me, what's angular, uh, angular momentum? So we, we have the initial angular momentum is equal to the final angular momentum, which in this case would say that the moment of inertia for Bob times omega naught is equal to the moment of inertia for this, the neutron star times the final angular velocity, which we, don't, we, which we don't know. That's our goal, is to figure out what is the rotational speed of this collapsed neutron star. Um, but we can solve for that by algebra, right? And so what we got, we got I bob times omega naught divided by the moment of inertia for the neutron star. And let's put in what we know about that. So I bob was two-fifths times 8 times the mass of the sun times the radius of the sun squared times omega naught and then we divide by 2 fifths times twice the mass of the sun um, times, well, 12 kilometers squared. 